Okay, so this P3 video is on power stations. I'm going to first talk about generators because they're used in almost all methods of electricity generation apart from solar. And all you need to know is that to make a generator, you need a coil of wire and a magnet, and the magnet needs to rotate inside the coil of wire, and that will produce a voltage. And if you want a larger voltage, uh, you can use a stronger magnet, more coils of wire, or spin the generator faster, and that will produce a larger voltage. You also need to know about the link between the amount of current drawn from a generator and the amount of fuel being used, if it is indeed um, a generator that's being powered by a fuel. So um, the greater the current, unsurprisingly, the more fuel is needed every second. Okay, That makes sense because basically what we're doing by increasing the current is increasing the power produced by the generator. Voltage is fixed at 230 if we're talking about use in the home. And so higher current means higher power. Higher power means you're going to need to release more energy every second. So you're going to need to burn more fuel every second. So that's the reason for that. That means there's a direct link between um, using electricity in your home and the amount of fuel burned in a power station. It's worth thinking about that um, when you look at things like... Um, the cost of um, electrical appliances, both in terms of the running costs, um, because a less efficient appliance will cost more to run, but also because a less efficient appliance that draws more current to do the same job uh, will also produce more of whatever pollutant the power station produces, if it is indeed uh, a power station that produces any pollution. Right, let's have a look at the different types of power station then. So we're going to start with the thermal power stations, and those are any power stations that basically involve heating water up in order to generate electricity. So the most obvious ones of those is fossil fuels. We'll look at the block diagram first. You have a furnace where the burning or the combustion takes place, and the energy transfer there is chemical in the fuel to thermal. You have a boiler where the water is heated and turned into steam, and that basically takes that thermal energy and effectively turns it into kinetic eventually because the steam is funneled down a pipe, and it, that's the type of energy we are going to use to drive the turbine. So the turbine just takes the kinetic energy of the steam and transfers it to itself. So we're just moving the energy from the steam to the turbine. Uh, not all of it, of course. There will be some that remains in the steam. So this is our, isn't a 100% efficient process. Uh, and then the turbine, like we've said before, will be attached to the generator and will cause the magnet inside it to rotate. And that's the process that turns kinetic energy into electrical. And the final step you may have is a transformer, which increases the voltage um, before the um, power is transmitted on the national grid. The main reason for doing that, remember, is that if we have a certain amount of power we need to distribute, we want to do it at very high voltage and low current. And that's because if we have a high current, um, then the wires get hot and that wastes a lot of energy as thermal energy lost to the surroundings um, as the power is being transmitted. And so you will get less electrical power um, at the house or the factory if you use a low voltage and a high current. A um, couple of points to note about this, sometimes the furnace and the boiler might be combined and sometimes the transformer might not be put on the end. So just look at the block diagram and make sure you are clear on which things are required of you. They sometimes put a little sort of rotating arrow between the turbine and the generator to show that they are linked together and one is rotating the other. So that's another little thing to look out for. Okay, I'm going to look now at the advantages and disadvantages of each type of power station. So starting with coal, um, pretty much any location you like, you can build a coal power station as long as you have transport links to deliver the coal and a good supply of cooling water. Although it's non-renewable, a relatively large amount of coal reserves exist in the world compared to the other fossil fuels. And even though it does produce carbon dioxide, you can these days either add carbon capture technology to existing power stations or make sure if you build a new power station that the carbon capture technology is built in to reduce massively the amount of CO2 emitted. Uh, disadvantages of coal, obviously it produces carbon dioxide which contributes to global warming and it produces sulphur dioxide which leads to acid rain. Um, on a general note, try to be specific about which pollutants you're talking about when you're talking about the disadvantages um, of power stations. If you just say pollution, that is far too general and, and will often not get you any credit. Obviously, coal is non-renewable because it's a limited supply. And out of all the fossil fuel power stations, it takes the longest to start up a coal power station. Not surprising, really, because the coal is a solid. It takes it longer to sort of get heated up and start burning properly. Um, but the Startup time is not as long as nuclear, as we'll see later. 
Okay, block diagram the same, obviously, for the oil and natural gas. So oil advantages, again, very similar. Uh, you can, of course, transport oil by ship or pipeline, which is a little bit more convenient. Disadvantages, same two things, carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide. Um, it's it's non-renewable and the supply is running out more quickly than it is um, with coal. Current reserves of oil, about 50 years um, estimated. Um, that obviously depends on whether they find any more and whether the rate of use changes. And it's a little bit more expensive than coal and partly because um, it's used for other things. Although oil price does change quite a lot, so that might not necessarily um, be true at all times. But historically, over the past you know few decades, that has been the case. Uh, gas, very similar um, advantages to oil. Um, and it also it has the shortest start-up time of the fossil fuel power stations. It's a lot easier to get the gas burning and get the um, boiler up to temperature than it is for the other two types. Um, disadvantages, carbon dioxide, no sulfur dioxide from the gas. I guess you could list that as an advantage because the gas itself doesn't have sulfur in it, really. And again, same problem as the oil, about 50 years worth, um, again, huge estimate um, at the current rate of use. Okay, another thermal power station now which has the same block diagram but obviously uses a different fuel is a biofuel or biomass power station. Advantages of biomass are that it's renewable um, and it can be used sustainably. So for example, if you are burning wood in your biomass power station, if you chop the trees down and use the wood from them and then you replant those trees every year, then that will be effectively carbon neutral. There will be no overall change in carbon dioxide levels and sustainable because you can keep doing that provided the trees keep growing. It also supports farmers um, so uh, you know because they can grow crops to sell for biofuels. So sugarcane is a very common one used to make um, ethanol. Um, disadvantages of biofuel. Um, you obviously need to build your power station near a supply of the fuel because otherwise it's going to cost a lot of money to transport it. And this is quite a big one, actually, that, um, you know, with rising world population, there's more need for growing food. And if you set aside land for biomass crops, then that land cannot be used for producing food crops. So there's a bit of competition there. Um, nuclear power stations. This is the first significant change to the block diagram because um, it's a nuclear power station. Then it's a totally different process that's releasing the energy in the fuel. Um, the previous power stations, the fossil fuel and the biofuel, have been combustion, so a chemical process. Now it's nuclear fission of uranium, um, which is going on. So that's nuclear energy into thermal. Once you've got past that part, then the rest of the power station is very similar. There may be some slight differences in the boiler design because we want to make sure that the water coolant or whichever coolant is used in the reactor doesn't leak into the environment. So it's kind of an isolated boiler system that stops that from happening, but the general principle is, is very similar. Okay, advantages of nuclear, very high what we call energy density in the fuel, so you need hardly um, any fuel to produce a very large amount of energy, and no carbon dioxide produced because we're not burning anything, so those are the two significant advantages. Disadvantages, perceived risk of nuclear power stations is very high, modern nuclear power stations are very safe, that's not necessarily the case for uh, older designs that didn't have as sophisticated um, technology deployed in them, um, but probably it's a higher perceived risk than the actual risk. Um, non-renewable obviously because the uranium or plutonium is limited in supply um, and the big one obviously is that we produce radioactive waste difficult to manage uh, needs to be buried in sealed containers for extremely long periods of time dangerous because it gives off ionizing radiation um, which obviously we know can increase cancer risk and uh, this power station is also very slow to start up and shut down um, because um, you need to get the fission reaction under control properly so this is not a good power station to use for a responding to sudden changes in demand. It's what we might call a good baseload station where you want to have it turned on the entire time. And our final type of thermal power station is geothermal. So this is naturally occurring sort of hot springs um, due to volcanic activity and that's where the steam comes from here rather than being heated by a fuel specifically. Very low running costs as there are no fuel costs, no carbon dioxide because we're not burning anything and it's renewable because the Earth's volcanic activity and um, tectonic activity will continue for the foreseeable future. Disadvantages, very limited sites for this. Um, so you can only build a geothermal power station where there is geothermal activity and it is possible to mismanage the uh, boreholes that you use to sort of drill into the ground to extract the steam um, and make the, um, 
the power station unusable for quite some period of time. Uh, wind power. So these are our non-thermal power stations now. Power stations that do not involve heating water up in order to drive a turbine. Instead, we are directly driving the turbine with our primary energy source. So the advantages of wind, very low running costs, as you again, no fuel costs, no carbon dioxide and waste products, renewable, and the land that the turbines are built on can still be used for farming. Significant disadvantages are that it's unpredictable and uncontrollable, uh, and certainly unpredictable in the long term. You might have some idea on a day-to-day -day basis what the wind is going to be like, but certainly not you know, weeks or months in advance. Um, can only be built where the wind conditions are suitable, so you can't have wind that's too slow, otherwise they're extremely inefficient. And you can't have wind that's too fast, otherwise they are, need to be shut down because they are dangerous. So um, there's a sort of narrow window of wind speeds that you want to have, and they need to be consistent and not varying too much, otherwise you're going to be constantly shutting them down and turning them back on again. And some people don't like the way they look. They think they're an eyesore on the landscape. Okay, uh, hydroelectric, again, directly driving the turbine, this time with moving water that is basically got its energy from the gravitational potential energy provided to the water by the sun, evaporating it off the oceans, and then it raining uh, uh, onto high ground. So it loses its gravitational potential energy, gets converted into kinetic as the water moves faster and faster down the hill, and then some of that kinetic energy is transferred to the turbine in the power station. Uh, advantages uh, again low fuel cost no fuel cost no carbon dioxide renewable this one is controllable because you can dam um, the river and use valves to regulate the water flow and this is extremely useful for short um, bursts of power to cope with sudden changes in demand so things like TV pickups where um, a popular sporting event or TV program stops and people um, put their kettle on um, that creates a sudden surge in demand. You need to be able to turn on hydroelectric power station very rapidly, um, and it's the fastest turn on of any of the types, so that's very useful. Disadvantages, again, dam's expensive to build. You flood some land in the process, probably. That means you can't use it for other things, and you might damage habitats. And again, it might not be uh, possible to build them everywhere, so the sites may be limited. Could often be sort of a long way away from um, uh, where the point of use might be. Okay, tidal power stations, again flowing water, this time driven by the tides. Very predictable this time because the tides are controlled by the position of the moon and the sun, so that's um, obviously easy to know in advance. No fuel costs again, no carbon dioxide again, and renewable. Disadvantages are you can't control when it's going to um, be working and it only produces power when the tide is going in or out. That is still a large portion of the day, but it will obviously be highest power output when the tide is moving fastest. And again, sites are limited, only on tidal rivers uh, and the barrages themselves that you use to actually um, house the turbines can be very expensive to build. Wave power, slight difference with the turbines here that you tend to have sort of these pontoons that float on top of the water and uh, twist um, to extract the energy from the waves or, or, or bend and uh, that's a little bit different than a turbine which rotates, but the principle is the same. We're still extracting the kinetic or movement energy of the water. Advantages, uh, excellent for islands, um, surrounded by large amounts of sea. Um, the waves are slightly more predictable than wind energy. They're still not 100% predictable. And again, all the same ones as we've seen before. No fuel costs, no carbon dioxide emissions, and renewable. Disadvantages, equipment's going to be able to survive bad weather, and it's often difficult to get to to repair it. And potential disruption to shipping, although that is obviously, you can plan for that, so it's not too much of an issue. Um, solar power is our last one. So this is the one that's fundamentally different from all the others because it doesn't really uh, use the um, spinning magnet and coil of wire generator system. Uh, if you're talking about a solar cell, then the sunlight is directly converted into electrical energy uh, by the solar panel. Um, you may or may not need to know this, but um, best to include it just in case. Solar panels produce direct current, like a, a battery. All the other types of electricity generation produce alternating current. We need alternating current to make the transformers work, um, otherwise you'll get no output from them at all if you use direct current. So you need a thing called an inverter from the solar cell to basically um, turn the direct current output into um, alternating current, or AC, so it can be used in the transformer and put onto the national grid. Uh, advantages of solar cells. Renewable again, uh, very good for remote locations largely because you can make them very small scale uh, or you can scale them to any size you like basically, um, unlike a lot of other power stations that basically have to be built big if they're going to be anywhere near efficient. 
Uh, no carbon dioxide emissions and no fuel costs again. Disadvantages, unpredictable of course, um, especially in the long term. Doesn't work at all at night and works less well, although not completely uh, zero output when it's cloudy. And some types of panel might use toxic chemicals in the manufacturer, though that probably is being worked on quite a lot um, in developing new panels. So that's all the types. Here's the summary of all the bits and pieces that are in them. Just quickly to recap again, uh, anything that you're burning things, you need a furnace, so that's the fossil fuels and the biofuel. Uh, nuclear power is the only one that needs a reactor. All three of those need a boiler because you're going to heat some water up because they are thermal power stations. The geothermal is the one thermal power station that doesn't need the boiler because the volcanic rocks do their own heating. All of them apart from solar have the turbine and the generator and solar is the only one that doesn't have any of those parts and has instead the solar cell and the inverter. And just a little note again, of course, about the fact that the fossil, fuel, fossil fuels um, are not renewable. Biofuel should say renewable on there, but it hasn't been put on there, so that one is renewable. Um, so it's only really the fossil fuels and the nuclear that are non-renewable in this system. So that's a summary of all the different types of power station. Uh, make sure you know at least some of the advantages and disadvantages um, so that you can use them in six mark questions. Very, very common to get asked to either justify choices of these things or to compare and contrast other people's choices um, about power generation.